were, but you're not the same person. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. you're not the same person at all. And so you, you almost feel like a caricature, caricature of yourself uh, when yeah. you're describing something from the past. Like I was talking to somebody uh, who I met on Discord, actually, and I thought of a story I hadn't thought of in a while. Because when I was about two or three years old, and I was first learning how to walk, because when I was first born, I had like club feet. So my feet kind of look like a shitty nine iron that you'd use on like a very rough green. I don't know. I, I just, I, I know like three golf terms and that's one of them. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it's ironic because like my, my hands used to be flat and like, you know, now, and I look like a praying mantis trying to teach Kung Fu uh, very shittily. Like, yeah, uh, that, that's a remix on the joke you heard from the Zoom show. So <laughs> but a little Zoom exclusive for you, ungrateful fucks. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh <laughs> Anyway, I know laughing at my own joke is, is so great. Um, but I, anyway, so uh, my, my feet were kind of inverted. And Dr. Deborah Bell out of Philadelphia, go birds, uh, go eagles. And uh, what she did was when I was first born, she took a rod and like stuck it up my foot just to kind of straighten them out. And they removed a back bone from like where my ankle is supposed to be, like the ankle. Uh, part. I don't know the exact uh, uh, bone, what it's called. But they removed both of those and my feet were straight. And uh, I kind of had like uh, like Cabbage Patch Kid uh, feet and like hands. They were kind of puffy. Okay. Uh, but like the doctors didn't think I'd be able to walk or be, I guess, a productive member of society, so to speak, uh, hmm. you know, in, in short. But when I was three years old, I learned how to walk. Just I just got up and started walking one day. And this, this is like a, it's like a weird memory. I forgot. That's why I brought up the Wolverine thing. Because if you remember in the movie, he had flashbacks to before he had the adamantium claws put in. This is my nerdy shit, so fucking touche to you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is like my little memory because I remember being up, like standing up from my seating position. And I started moving and my grandmother had this bookcase uh, that she'd keep all her old books and like movies in. And I remember going, I guess I went face like head first into it, just smashed like right through it. And, you know, he, my mom was freaking out. I think my aunt was there. There's a few members of my family. And uh, there's not one scratch on me. Like, not a wow. single scratch. I, like, the, literally, it, it, could, it could not have been as more poetic or as, I guess, more like a movie as you would have uh, anticipated because they just helped me back up, sat back up on my feet, and I just went about my day. They just cleaned up the glass. And to this day, she, her bookcase does not have glass in it. So... Did you break the glass? Yeah, completely broke it. Completely <gasps> broke it. Oh my god! Like it, it's it. It was completely shattered. Like I don't know uh, the pressure point that I hit or like where I hit. From what I can remember, it was kind of in the middle, but like I kind of like hit the bottom a little bit. So maybe the trajectory of where I I hit, you know, but it had something to do with. I don't know. I'm just making shit up at this point. I just I remember, I remember the feeling. And I remember I was up and then I was down. There was glass everywhere. That's wild that you remember that at age three. I feel like most people's me- or first memories aren't that young. But yeah, then again, yeah. that's like quite an impression. Like that's a thing to remember, you know. Don't ask me who won the World Series that year, you know, like it was an office. <laughs> well, but, you're three, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. I, I, I imagine if I had like a Mulrooney flag. Eh, that's tight. <laughs> <laughs> it's in there with my Barney shit. Yeah, but it, I think where I was going with that uh, meandering story even though you were so captivated. So, you know, because it's... No, I, I, as a mother of a toddler who has broken glass things very recently, I am quite riveted. <laughs> but yeah, you were talking about like, you know, caricatures of yourself and how like it doesn't even feel like it's you, you know, when you recall these things. Yeah, yeah. So like, it, was, is there a moment in your life that you wrote about specifically like that? Because I, I think I'm going to write something about that. I, I've taken little bits like that and done little journal entries but have you used it to maybe spark another idea or maybe that's a chain reaction to another idea perhaps i don't know i don't know exactly i mean i feel like i had such like a basic easy childhood that there's not really a whole lot there's no yeah breaking a glass cabinet moments that i can think of in my childhood that i could figure out how to write a song about um, but I have been recently, I started rereading my childhood journals because I kept a journal from the time that I was in grade two until I started writing songs instead of keeping a journal. So I have like, I don't know how many years that is, 12, 
10, 10 years of journals to go through. And, uh, and I actually, at one point in time, I did start writing a song based on like my first breakup with a boy in the fifth grade, which doesn't count as a real relationship at all. But like the things that I wrote in my journal were so hilariously dramatic and like funny and cute. And I was like, I think I could make a song out of this and it would maybe actually not be terrible. Imagine if you would have put that on Snapchat at that age. Like, imagine that shit. Oh, I can't imagine, like, having that kind of technology oh. as a kid. I would fuck that up so bad. Mm -hmm.